Oh, now I stop talking, and then I will uh, start to register. Elena, are you registering, recording? Yes, you can go ahead. We are ready. Okay, you can go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Monday, 26th September, 2022. We are here today to speak about the photonics for aesthetics and cosmetics. As you know, uh, skin is a, a very complex system that is protecting our body. And today we will discuss on how photonics could improve and uh, support the studies and the uh, performance of our skin from aesthetics and cosmetics point of view. Here we are, uh, EPIC is representing uh, one of the largest community in the world, collecting more than 800 members active in photonics, everywhere in every sector. And behind these great uh, numbers of company, there are a team of uh, people strongly motivated to sustain and enhance this ecosystem through uh, attention on technology, market reports, networking, and a easy access to the markets. Less, but, uh, last but not less important is also the support that we are is, uh, giving EPIC in the mentorship, in the search of uh, people, and also in the investment side. We are organizing uh, several online and in-person meetings. This is just uh, our calendar until uh, January, but we are still uh, working. We are already working in the preparation of 2023, with, which will be another busy year. And now I, I'm really is a pleasure to introduce my colleague, Antonio Castello. Please, Antonio. Thank you, Antonio. Um, welcome, everybody. It's really nice to talk uh, again about uh, photonics related with this aesthetics and cosmetics uh, topic. Um, we have quite nice agenda for, for today. Uh, and also first, we would like to, to thank you to our sponsors um, for uh, helping us in the organization and also for support uh, the topic. Um, we have uh, connected um, Con Constantinas from Optoman. So I think you can uh, introduce a little bit your company and say a few words uh, about, about uh, you. Uh, thank you, Antonio. Uh, so I'm Konstantinos from Optiman. Uh, Optiman is a laser optics manufacturer, and we serve optics for uh, most demanding uh, laser applications. I'm looking forward to hear how we can contribute to aesthetics and cosmetics market. So that's brief for, for me. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Um, I, I also see, see Kevin uh, from uh, from Focuslight, that is our second uh, sponsor. Uh, Kevin, perhaps uh, you want to also uh, connect and say a few words about uh, what is your company company doing and your relationship with uh, cosmetics and, and aesthetics? Kevin, uh, I, don't, I don't hear you. You are muted nowadays. Hello, me? Yeah. Now, now I hear you. Yeah. Uh, Foxlight was founded in uh, 2007 and uh, headquartered in Xi'an, China. And we are a uh, fast growing, uh, growing company that develop and manufacture the high power uh, dead laser uh, and com common materials. Uh, we call it a fo photo generation and the laser optics. We call it a, a photo uh, controller. 
uh, uh, control using in very industry uh, industry and application. We can also provide the, the, the host solution uh, for the customers. Yeah, just uh, for the uh, light. Great, yeah. thank you, thank you. So thank you to both of you for uh, your support today. And I hope also you can find interest in the, the discussion. Um, as Antonio uh, mentioned, we are uh, 800 members um, and um, all these topics uh, that we um, present in the online meetings, um, we try to have a nice supply chain like the one you see here. And it's, it's very good to uh, have representatives from all the parts uh, related with photonics uh, for aesthetics and cosmetics. So um, this is the, the list of companies registered in, in the event today. Um, so uh, in, in case you don't see your logo here, uh, for next time, I would recommend to uh, register earlier uh, so we can include you in the list. Um, as you can see, we have uh, people from the dermocosmetic um, companies, uh, also uh, medical devices manufacturers, uh, and of course, uh, component manufacturers, uh, lasers, uh, optics and micro-optics, fibers. Um, uh, of course, R&D, that is uh, very important to have uh, representatives from uh, um, this uh, sector. And uh, last but not least, uh, market intelligence and consultancy. It's very uh, important to have investors and consultants interested in, in the topic. It shows that it's uh, a very trend topic um, in the now and for the next, uh, for the near future. Um, so I, I expect that we'll have a, a good discussion today and you will learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on in, in photonics for aesthetics and, and cosmetics and we can go with the with the agenda for today um, as Antonio mentioned, we are the, the moderators uh, for today. Um, we have uh, interesting speakers. Uh, we have an issue with the first speaker, with uh, Dr. Nicola, uh, that is not available at this moment uh, for starting the session. Uh, but we can proceed uh, with um, Panagiotis Alexandros, uh, research manager from L'Oreal, um, that uh, he is going to talk about uh, what photonic techniques are they using uh, in L'Oreal. Um, so, uh, Panagiotis, you can perhaps start uh, sharing your screen uh, and uh, we continue with your, with your presentation. Uh, yes, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Let me just share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Excellent. So um, thank you very much for this uh, uh, very lovely opportunity to uh, present to you uh, um, what's the um, uh, impact of uh, photonics uh, in our activities uh, at L'Oreal. Um, I'm the head of uh, digital optics um, at uh, Research Innovation, where we focus a lot in um, um, the appearance, uh, the digitalization of the appearance, uh, both of uh, our products and as well of, uh, of our consumers and uh, diagnostics uh, service uh, for personalized beauty uh, either at, at the point of sale uh, or at home. And as you will see, uh, photonics is really uh, um, at, uh, at the core of what we're doing uh, at L'Oreal since uh, uh, beauty is a very um, uh, visual uh, industry and um, you'll see all the, the different applications where uh, uh, photonics are involved. But just before start starting some uh, key figures about, uh, about L'Oreal that uh, um, I'm not sure that uh, uh, all the audience is uh, familiar with. So the, the group of L'Oreal is the number one uh, beauty uh, uh, company uh, in the beauty industry uh, with a lot of uh, in, uh, investment and involvement in uh, research innovation, uh, having more than 4% of, of the revenue that is being reinvested in, uh, uh, in research. And we could say that research at L'Oreal is at uh, the DNA of, of the company, so there are more than 500 um, patents every year. And um, it's, a, it's a global portfolio of uh, more than uh, of 35 international brands. So there are different uh, divisions like consumer, lux division, uh, professional products or active cosmetics. So there is a, a high variety of portfolio of brands. And uh, this is the challenge for us as well that we have to uh, um, to address all the different uh, needs of, uh, of our brands. Um, so if we start with uh, uh, how photonics is uh, uh, being involved across uh, all the different fields, because our activity uh, has to do, uh, once we say uh, digital optics, for example, is because we go um, through the, the whole pipeline of uh, the optical measurement uh, to uh, the modelization, 
uh, all the way to imaging, uh, computer vision, and, uh, and graphics in order to digitalize uh, the appearance uh, of beauty. And uh, in all of these stages, we can see that uh, photonics uh, is very uh, uh, well uh, uh, represented. So if we take, for example, uh, skin and, and makeup, first we have the, uh, the model that we want to do uh, of the different uh, um, features. For example, if we take skin, there is a modeling of skin. For example, if we're talking about uh, the color of skin, the, taking into account the different layers. Uh, if we want to measure, for example, the melanin in the skin, uh, or if we want to uh, model uh, the undertone uh, um, of, of the skin, this is, let's say, a part of, of the knowledge, all the different devices that we're going to use in order to, to measure and model uh, skill appearance. And then we have, uh, we have as well the, the product side where we want to, uh, to measure products. And uh, what we see, for example, is that uh, product change once uh, we have the measurement, like a bulk measurement uh, of a liquid uh, foundation, for example, as we see in the picture. And um, the characteristics are going to change as, for example, the, the product will dry. Um, so why we care a lot about uh, these, uh, these aspects is that because what we want to do is to uh, provide our consumers a very uh, personalized uh, solution. So if we're talking about uh, makeup, for example, what we see here is that uh, we can have, for example, a measurement of the color on the skin uh, or different points uh, in the face and then propose uh, the formula that is uh, the closest to, uh, to the need of the consumer. And we can uh, even go a, a step further. Um, we use the, what, the product that we have today available, the eShade Finder where we can do the same thing using artificial intelligence at home. So all the different aspects that we have to model in terms of uh, uh, different color management, the different illumination, how to light is reflected on the, um, uh, on the skin, uh, so that we make sure that uh, we provide uh, the better service to, to our consumers. Uh, similar to what we do in uh, skin diagnostics. So here, for example, you see um, one of uh, the, the device, uh, which is a uh, uh, from our uh, uh, partner at uh, Canfield, uh, where you can, uh, it's a full face device where the consumer uh, puts uh, uh, um, his or her face in the device. And we have uh, three different uh, points of view acquisitions, like front image and side uh, images. And we have three different uh, uh, lighting modes. So we have a standard white light, uh, cross polarized, and UV light. And then uh, using artificial intelligence and um, computer vision. We can have a very holistic uh, diagnostic at the point of sale of all the different uh, uh, parameters, uh, even from uh, visible and um, uh, non-visible uh, uh, attributes. So we want to go a step further and uh, with uh, multispectral or uh, uh, other sensors to be able to, uh, to go even farther through the uh, invisible uh, spots that uh, uh, features that we can, uh, we can have with this uh, technology. So this is what we're doing full face. And uh, similar applications that what we have on the local measurements that we want to, to have a very uh, precise um, uh, identification of different features that we have on the skin, uh, either it's uh, the, the quality of the skin barrier or we're talking about hydration or some uh, pigmentation spots that we want to measure. Uh, so all of these are, for example, already applications that we propose to, the, to our consumers. They would like to go one step down further. And lastly, um, at here, we are talking about diagnostics where we can do with imaging or searching devices uh, at the point of sale, for example. We want to measure what's the, the hair color, you know, to propose a very uh, um, personalized uh, coloration to achieve uh, the desirable result uh, or other attributes such as the hair thickness, uh, the hair damage, for example, or the dandruff uh, and the scalp condition are all of uh, um, great uh, uh, interest to, to us. And uh, the way we model uh, skin, for example, is exactly the same thing that we do uh, for hair. Uh, so hair is a very uh, complicated uh, uh, nature in terms of geometry and color. So uh, the difference is that uh, we don't just have this diffuse color. That's why we use this kind of uh, um, uh, BRDFs that, uh, that we try to, uh, to estimate uh, how light is reflected from hair and transmitted in all the different angles. So we have all this equipment at the lab that we want to, uh, to measure, for example, if we want to, to have the highlights uh, in the hair, or if we want to, to have uh, the second band, like the second reflection, 
that we have on the hair cylinder, which give us this uh, highlight uh, that have some information about the hair color. And then if we want to move all the way to the transmission color, which is the third element of, of hair, that is more the diffuse color that we see uh, uh, across all hair. And uh, if we do this right, and we have our measurements right, what uh, we do then, uh, he, this is, for example, in a synthetic image that you see on, uh, on your right, uh, where we model uh, the, uh, the way that light interacts with air. And these are tools that we want to, uh, uh, that we uh, either do for internal research or that uh, we propose uh, for the personalization of products of our consumers. So that's a, a very short introduction about many different uh, applications of, of photonics of, of L'Oreal. So thank you very much uh, uh, for, for the time of this presentation and uh, I would like to, to take some questions. Thank you so much, Panagiotis. So this is really, let's say, it's fantastic this presentation because also I would say, uh, I think for, for most of us, at least for me, is really we are discovering a quite a brand new world that uh, looks uh, so distant from uh, our technology, but uh, probably we are not, uh, we are much more closer. And okay, mm -hmm. I see already Constantinas uh, raised the hands. So Constantinas, go ahead with your question. Okay, I, I have uh, one very easy one. Uh, what is active uh, cosmetics? Uh, I showed one, uh, you showed in one of the, of the slides. There's one branch, active cosmetics. What is this? Yes, uh, so for example, if we're talking about uh, our skincare uh, branch, for example, here you see applications of uh, Lancome and, and Kills that are in part of the uh, Lux division. Um, the active cosmetics is a branch that says, uh, La Rose Posay or uh, VC, uh, that they're, in, let's say, in the frontier between uh, uh, para um, uh, pharmaceutical uh, brands, so that uh, they uh, they have more uh, active uh, components in their uh, their formulas. That's uh, the active cosmetics uh, division. Okay. So, and a second question is about uh, hair modeling. Uh, so, yes. uh, what what uh, what are you lacking for to bring this technology like to the market? Or, uh, yes, so for example, here the, the rendering that uh, that you can see uh, is like a path tracing technology uh, where um, like this is the accelerated form that it takes, let's say, five to six seconds to, uh, to have uh, this kind of uh, uh, image. So this is something we could uh, bring to, uh, to the market uh, today uh, if in terms of a photo. Um, it's a bit more challenging, like using, for example, augmented reality uh, to have a uh, um, uh, a 3D tracking of, of the video, for example, uh, that you can show the result directly to, to someone uh, on a video. But uh, as a photo, this is something that the technology is already uh, there with uh, the kind of model that we can do that we could bring to, to the market today. Thank you. Good, good. And uh, okay, I see a question from Antonio. Antonio, please mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, nice presentation. And I'm curious about the the, the measurements, reflection transmission in the hair. Um, do you uh, consider only the visible light to have an impression of the of the appearance of the hair, or do you also need the information from infrared, ultraviolet? Um, how do these wavelengths also affect the appearance uh, you, you you have of the hair? That's uh, that's a really great question. So um, for these kind of um, uh, the, the BRDFs that we're doing uh, uh, here, for example, uh, for measurement of, of hair, uh, this is just visible light. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, how uh, just to determine all the um, uh, reflections and transmission of the, the hair uh, cylinder. Um, UV is not so much of interest in terms of, of hair. Uh, infrared can be a lot, uh, but more on the diagnostics part, like uh, things that mm -hmm. we can see uh, infrared uh, in hair has to do more with uh, damage or uh, other substances that we can have uh, in hair, for example, previous colorations. Uh, um, so this is of interest, not so much of the appearance side, unless we want to or maybe measure some uh, damage on hair. Um, but so far, like this setup of this uh, spectrogon imagery that we have here, it's just a uh, uh, visible light. But for the diagnosis, we're definitely interested in, in other parts of the of the spectrum. This is something that uh, we we're always uh, keep an eye for. <laughs> great, great, thank you. Yes, and 
Sorry, uh, how critical is uh, the wavelength of this uh, illuminating system? Because I think that uh, in, we are speaking about color. So also the illuminating, uh, I, I suppose LEDs or the illuminating source is very important as intensity and also uh, as a wavelength. So uh, please, if you can comment on it. Yes, um, so for uh, this kind of, uh, it, it depends on the systems, like for this kind of uh, spectral uh, goniometer, for example, uh, it's more or less, let's say, standard equipment. So it's not uh, the main uh, difficulty. Where we're more peak in terms of um, uh, wavelengths, for example, especially in our diagnostic devices, like um, um, if we're talking about uh, skin care and uh, skin analysis, uh, we want to be as precise as possible in terms of the different wavelengths that we're going to, to use since they, they will define what's the penetration uh, uh, on the skin. Uh, that's why a challenge uh, for us as well is to uh, move more towards uh, um, multispectral solutions, for example, for, uh, for the future. So one part has to do with, um, as you said, the wavelength, and the other has to do um, in terms of light sources, another challenge that we have is uh, uh, repeatability, especially with uh, many different uh, devices that we want them to to be very uh, um, solid and robust uh, uh, over time. Um, because the calibration is something that's not easy uh, to do, especially for uh, uh, very um, uh, largely uh, deployed uh, uh, systems that we can have, like in hair salons or uh, point of sales. Uh, or spas, uh, but um, technical maintenance is, a, <laughs> let's say, always a talent. So um, the robustness as well of light sources is something that uh, um, uh, that we have to take into account on the designs that we do for uh, the diagnostic devices. Yeah, yeah, sure, because this is really important because let's say, as a, and also because then you are thinking on a, I would say, a high volume production of this device. It, if we can consider all uh, the shops of L'Oreal and all the other uh, brands <clears throat> are thousands of... Uh, yes, we're talking about thousands of, of units, yes. Let's say not thousands, probably tens of thousands of units uh, all around it, the world. It, it depends if, uh, like, it, it, it depends in terms of a division. Uh, and for example, like for these, uh, like very large devices, because we can have, there are as well uh, space limitations. Uh, that's why we don't always deploy the full face uh, uh, diagnostics. Sometimes we uh, we deal as well with more uh, uh, handheld ones. Um, so the large ones, I would say that it's in volumes of hundreds to thousands, uh, depending on the division. Uh, like for more uh, mass market and for more uh, uh, compact devices, then yeah, the volumes can go to, to tens of uh, thousands, yes. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you so much. I have so many questions, but uh, I want to leave the space first to Amir. And then I see also that there is in the chat uh, a question from Eneka. So maybe first Amir and then Eneka, switch on the camera and make your question uh, after Amir. Please, Amir. Yes. Hi, uh, thank you so much. Very interesting talk and so many interesting publications that you've had uh, in recent years. So thank you for that. Um, okay. What I was wanting to ask is actually not focusing just on the, um, I'm sorry for the background noises, um, not just the uh, actual photonics measurement, but also the psychology, because you can get to a perfect match when it comes to a skin tone, but oftentimes the client would like to have a different kind of shade, a bit lighter or a different undertone. Uh, what kind of work are you doing in that regard? Yes, yes, that's a, that's a very, very good question. And uh, this is uh, exactly what's on. And I don't know if you can see uh, my, uh, my mouse uh, on your screen. Um, so what you see here, like first there is a... We, do, we don't see your screen, uh, ah, Alexandros. Sorry. You can try to share again. Ah, you don't see it. Okay, sorry. Sorry for that. Now let me try to share it again. Uh, does it work now? Now we see the screen. Thank you. Perfect. So um, can you see my mouse as well? Yes. So yes, what you see here is that uh, first we have a de definition of the skin tone. 
Um, so with uh, the device measurement, uh, we can in different uh, spots, uh, like there is a machine learning al algorithm that will define what's the uh, underlying uh, color of the person. Um, but then there is the preference as well of the person. For example, um, depending on the, the undertone or depending maybe on their makeup strategy that uh, they have, because as we said, beauty industry is highly uh, visual. So there is always um, a difference as well between what can be, uh, let's say, uh, optically measured. And uh, as you say, uh, um, uh, the psychovisual as well, uh, and the psychological uh, aspect of uh, of color and other optical properties. So we have to take this in, into account as well. Uh, what's the, the need uh, of the person? Uh, because some people, for example, will say that I don't want maybe ex my exact color, but I would like to uh, compensate for something else, w whether this being my undertone, whether be this be um, matching it with something that I wear very, uh, very often. So these are uh, elements that we, we take into account. And then in the final application, once we have all the recommendation, there is always some parameters that uh, you, can, uh, you can tune according to your uh, will. Uh, if you think that uh, there is some uh, some room for improvement in terms of uh, uh, what you really want. Good. Good. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, Eneka, please, what is your mind? Yes, hello. Um, in fact, I have two different questions. The first is, uh, when you speak about diagnostic, uh, are you meaning that you are converging from cosmetic to health? in particular for skin products, first question. And the second one is about uh, augmented uh, reality and virtual uh, reality. Are you implementing these tools in, in your shops to improve the user experience? Yes, uh, so for, for the first question, uh, diagnostics, yes, it's quite of a vague term that <laughs> um, it's more, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, represented in, um, in medical terminology. Um, L'Oreal is still a beauty industry, so we don't uh, cross the line to, uh, to medical equipment. So all of these systems, for example, do not have um, uh, the medical uh, device uh, authorization. They're considered to be cosmetics uh, applications. So even though, let's say, the um, um, the frontier bef between uh, dermatology uh, and uh, uh, cosmetics in terms of uh, skin diagnostics, for example, um, is getting uh, more and more uh, gray, a gray area, um, because there is a huge, uh, huge overlap. So that's why we use uh, um, uh, the term, for example, uh, uh, diagnostics as, uh, as we um, treat these, uh, these features. Um, but yeah, it's not the medical part of diagnostic. For example, we're not going to uh, detect whether there is uh, some disease of the skin or there is a, a melanoma. It's not something that uh, uh, we mainly uh, do now. But we stay more on the cosmetics part, like what are the uh, uh, the pores of the of the skin, what's the color, what's the um, uh, the, the wrinkles, uh, that part of uh, of the cosmetics industry. And um, the other part about uh, augmented virtual reality, th that's the, the main need that, uh, that we have for uh, this uh, appearance digitalization, because the main challenge to us is that um, in terms of augmented virtual reality today, like the, the technology is booming. There are many nice uh, uh, use cases. And um, we see a, a very uh, um, realistic and plausible results. Uh, we have the stress uh, on our side to, to make sure that um, the connection between the real and the virtual world is very seamless. Because if I want, for example, to take a decision about, I see this uh, lipstick, for example, uh, on the app, uh, on a digital experience, and then I want to really buy it and try it uh, in, in real life, I want this to really to, to match. So that's why uh, we try to, to model all the different uh, products and then uh, inject this information to our uh, augmented virtual reality uh, experience of tomorrow so that uh, we make sure that uh, they're as close as possible. Okay. okay. I think that really, this is really opening a, a brand uh, new scenario, especially for, let's say, for uh, the people of photonics. 
Uh, I don't see any other question for the moment. So it's, thank you so much, uh, Panagiotis, for this great uh, presentation. And then I will move uh, to the next uh, speaker, uh, Gregorio, the CTO from uh, Sinclair. So the floor is yours, please. You are still muted. Yes. Now yes. it's okay. Okay. Hello. Hello uh, to everybody. Can you see my screen? Sure. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you uh, for this uh, kind invitation. It's for me a, a, a really pleasure to be here and to, to have this uh, uh, so short time to, to, to show you, to uh, what uh, we are going, uh, we are doing. <coughs> okay, uh, I'm going to, to speak about uh, my current company, uh, Sinclair, about the past, the present, and the and the future. Okay. First, I will I will start with a general overview of uh, Cocoon Medical, was uh, was my my previous company. Okay. Uh, then uh, revise the, the Sinclair product portfolio and, and the main challenges uh, we have now in this moment. Okay. Just uh, about the Cocoon Medical, I think this is a, a common uh, 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 issue for all the companies. The most important is the strategy. You know, the, the strategy of the company. Okay. The, the, the strategy of Cocoon when we started was to identify high demanding markets in this uh, sector, in the aesthetic and um, medical sector. And then we identify uh, some uh, growing markets, some uh, as uh, hair removal, uh, fat removal, and skin tightening. Okay. Also, we um, also understood that is, it was very important to, to have uh, good agreements with uh, big franchises in Spain to test all of our uh, devices, our new devices, and also to collaborate with uh, well-known international distributors. Uh, of course, to have our own clinics to test our uh, new devices. Okay, we identify some uh, key technologies, key technologies uh, in different uh, for, for this application, radio frequency and US, US cavitation. Okay, because we had a, a huge experience uh, with these uh, products. Cryoadipolysis, policies, which is a fat removal with a non-invasive uh, uh, cooling of the skin. And this was, a, let's say, in, in, invented uh, in, in 2010. Okay, and, and this, uh, the, the potential of the market was very high and also high hair removal. Okay, but here in hair removal, to, to have something to... To, to offer to the market, no? uh, and, and then uh, we uh, uh, develop a new technology for hair removal to obtain uh, superior results. And the most important is to have an, uh, people in the company to develop these products, not only people from engineering, also people from science, technology, and, and clinical. This is more or less our, uh, our evolution. We uh, company was founded in 2010. Uh, we changed the headquarters uh, three years later. Uh, we also um, uh, 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 founded a, a factory in Bulgaria, okay, to manufacture the products uh, by ourselves. And, and we also uh, had different uh, subsidiaries in different parts of the world, in Colombia, in Italy, in Hong Kong. Uh, then uh, from two years ago, we had a new a factory in Esplugas of Llobregat and a new office in the US. Uh, last year, the company was, was acquired by Sinclair. And during this uh, year, uh, we have acquired an uh, Israeli company, Bayora, and, and we have done also a Sinclair rebranding for the, for the three companies. For the Sinclair, now uh, the Sinclair product portfolio, we have all the products from the three companies. From Cocoon, uh, we have the products for, for hair removal, uh, two models, Prime Lace and Elysium for the medical and for the beauty market. Uh, we have also um, a device for fat reduction based on cryoadipolysis, a first generation and a second generation, okay, with a, a more performances in the second generation, and also a, a device for skin tightening. Um, 
from Viora, uh, we had many different products also for, for skin uh, treatment, products that combine different technologies, uh, radio frequency for skin tightening and skin rejuvenation, and other technologies uh, also for, uh, for this uh, cosmetic, uh, cosmetic market. Uh, also, we uh, during uh, this year we have also achieved an agreement with a company, uh, and, and we now we are uh, the the we can uh, distribute this in exclusive this uh, technology that combine uh, different applicators from different technologies for from for cleaning for micro dermabrasion for radio frequency ultrasounds and uh, EMS uh, muscle stimulation. Uh, because the, the objective of the company is to grow, okay, not only from, from uh, our own products, also from uh, new acquisitions and, and also finding agreements with uh, key companies. And regarding Sinclair, Sinclair is a, a company leader in the market with uh, injectables and threads for, uh, for filling. Okay? We have different fillers uh, in the market. Uh, three uh, fillers with a uh, collagen uh, stimulator. Okay, everything for uh, skincare. Okay, and the main challenges we are now uh, uh, facing is uh, we are in the process to integrate the three companies. This is a very uh, uh, interesting interesting moment. Okay, uh, we are people from different different countries and different cultures and and products. Fine also synergies between our products because it's also very interesting to uh, to combine the medical the medical devices with the uh, with the fillers with the injectables and uh, to build plans for for the future no? and because the objective of our company the Sinclair company is to become a, a market leader and that's all from from my side very short presentation thank you very much Thank you so much. It's very interesting. Uh, I don't see any question for the people, so I start making maybe a question, a personal question. Uh, I see a lot of uh, RF and other, let's say, not photonics uh, technologies. Uh, <clears throat> what is your perspective for the future? Uh, we will see less future and more, uh, let's say, RF or other technologies, or this is just uh, as it is and uh, we will see some changes. And I then think... I have, sorry, I have another question that also looks interesting, is uh, do you see any interaction between uh, cosmetics uh, or chemicals uh, like filler and uh, photonics? I mean, uh, some uh, photo, photo effect uh, where, uh, Special laser, special wavelengths could start uh, action on uh, on the medical drug. Okay. Thank you. Very interesting question. Regarding the, um, the first question, okay. in this moment, this market, the, the cosmetic and medical market, the innovation in the market is not so big. It's not a, a we, we cannot see a lot of innovation in the market. They are uh, same technologies, radio frequency, um, the same lasers, maybe the Erbium, the CO2, the fractional, non-fractional. They are the technologies were developed some years ago. And then the, now uh, the, the trend is through, a, let's say, low cost technology. Okay, because the, the demand from the customer, from the patient, is low cost uh, procedures. No, they are there are many much more people uh, looking for treatments. Okay, it's like a democracy. No, for for this treatment. No? and then there are many technologies like radio frequency with a low low cost. Okay, there are many technologies like that. Okay, I think this is a, a good opportunity for photonics. To also to to find this uh, this hole, okay. Uh, uh, let's say photonics, uh, especially developed for cosmetic and aesthetics, because many many products are developed for other uh, markets, for industrial, for scientific markets, and maybe there are not many developments specials for the aesthetics, okay. With a with a cost model uh, oriented to this uh, market, I think. 
here is where we have a, a challenge to, to identify these kind of technologies that can be attractive for this, uh, for this market. We have some ideas, some projects, and, 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 and of course, we, we will work on, uh, with projects on, on photonics because the photonics at the end is very important for the skin. It's very, very important for the skin. And regarding your second question, uh, it's a difficult question. It's a difficult question because uh, at the end, the pharma industry is very difficult. It's, uh, it's many years of research to understand the behavior of the pharma in, in, in the body. There are the, the clinical studies for this is very complex. You need many, many patients, okay? And you have to study very well the interaction between everything, the light or the chemistry with, with, the, with the drug, no? And this is very difficult. I, there are many, many investigations on this, but uh, it's, it's quite complex to, to find really the way that uh, some light can in, do interaction with the drug and uh, activate the, the behavior of the drug and vice versa. Okay, for, for, for example, for hair removal, there are some uh, uh, um, additives or some solutions that can uh, help the hair removal, no? But <coughs> this is quite difficult, quite difficult. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I see uh, René from uh, Lumir Laser that raised the hands. Yes, hello. Uh, I would like to know, okay, besides the, the cost structure, which could be addressed, of course, uh, what would be the benefits uh, that you would be looking for for a, a specific uh, laser or light source uh, for use in your medical device? So is the pain level uh, an important factor? The, the recovering time, for example, is it important or the, the ease to, to use the the source itself. Uh, you, you have uh, to have uh, a big compromise between uh, these four factors. One is the performance, the efficacy of, of the light, of the mechanism, okay, the safety and the pain. Okay, and this is really very important because you can, you can be uh, very effective, okay, but at the same time to be uh, to have uh, adverse effects, side effects, and at the same time to be very painful. And you, it's very important to find uh, this good compromise. Okay, for example, in hand removal, okay, one of the most uh, uh, problems of hand removal is that you are, you are, this is based in, in, in the melanin absorption, okay, and you have melanin in the hair and in the skin, okay, and, and with your skin is, uh, is dark, okay, the efficacy of the laser. Okay, is not and then you have it's necessary to find solutions for the removal for dark skin types. Okay, mm. uh, this this is and then you need to find these wavelengths, these wavelengths uh, 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 compatible with the chromophore you want to hit. You have different chromophores in your skin. You know you have the water, the blood, the melanin, and uh, at the end you you need to hit, and you can yeah. hit the skin. Okay, uh, absorbing from the water or from the blood or from the melanin. Okay, this is mm. if you are considering heating. No, there are other uh, mechanisms, no, thermoacoustical, etc. Et yeah. But this the, the wavelength is very important in, in for this reason, no, for for this absorption. And the safety and the pain is also crucial. Okay, three micron, so three micron is a is an interesting wavelength because yes. it's absorbed by the water, and this is uh, very interesting. Yes, of course. Uh, I think the, this wavelength has uh, some, some benefits, uh, especially if you can concentrate, the, if you can have uh, focus spots that are much smaller, that, is, uh, that can be benefit. Uh, you can add some benefits to the patient. Uh, sure, this is by sure, but this is you have to combine this with a low cost. Yes. <laughs> it's, not <laughs> have, it's not the same to have a laser for the automotive, yeah. for example, than yeah. a laser for, for aesthetics. Yeah. yeah, that's good to, that's good to know. Uh, at least uh, we're on the right path. So. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I don't see no other question. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, I see Philip from uh, Vinet Fiber Optics. Yes, yes, the correct. The new name of Leone Fiber Optics. 
So yes, <laughs> yes, of please, course. please switch on the camera. Don't shy. And yeah, I, I really I I tried it, but I now have a new company laptop since yesterday, and sometime somehow something is glued in front of the camera. <laughs> I will remove it later. <laughs> don't but, worry, uh, don't worry. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, yeah, you're right now, uh, Leone Fiber Optics became Weinert Fiber Optics, if you know us as Leone. And I have, a, of course, question which is related uh, to the light guides. So um, it's quite common when I hear this kind of applications like hair removal and fat removal that I also think on uh, think about light guides. And I know there are some uh, companies then who are really using light guides and there are other methods to transport the light. How do you? You handle it. Are you using light guides, or um, if yes, do you see any kind of, let's say, demand to tackle some special problem you have with light guides, and where maybe uh, you would wish some kind of new development or some, let's say, to get rid of some specific problems? Yeah, we are using light guides. We are using light guides in front of in for hair removal application. We are using uh, light guides. Oh, and in front of the laser diodes, and we have also an IPL uh, from Viora, and also an endymion uh, jack from from Viora. And in all of these three products, we are using uh, light guides because the laser head is in the applicator; it's not in the in the central unit. This is in the applicator. Then, for this application, you don't need a, a high a laser with a high beam quality. Uh, the, the spot size is higher than one centimeter uh, uh, squ uh, centimeter square, okay. And then also the beam quality is not also very important. Uh, you can you can work with uh, divergent uh, laser beams, okay. And then with light guides is a, a solution good enough for for this application. Uh, it's it's also true that the, the disadvantage of this is the weight of the applicator because everything is in the applicator, okay. And then if you have a solution based on laser on fibers, and and the the, the source is in the central unit, this is also a very good for the application because at the end the weight is will be less. The problem for this is the cost. All all of these uh, fiber solutions require optics from the laser diodes to, to, to reduce the size of the laser beam to introduce into the fiber. And this increase the cost of the device, okay? But uh, we are working to, uh, to have uh, a smart solutions using uh, fiber optics. This uh, is also very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for your good. Time. So I think that this is a good opportunity also to talk uh, between uh, you two, between uh, Sinclair and uh, Weinert uh, Fiber Optics, because probably both of you has, uh, will have a good opportunity of uh, cooperation developing new product. Okay, for me, it's a, it's, it would be a, a pleasure and a, yep. an, an advantage to be here, no? to, to find uh, some uh, partners and future collaborators. Very nice. Good. Yeah. Uh I will contact you later. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Also, uh, maybe it's just a reminder to all the people here in the room and also the people that are following us on our YouTube channel. Uh, please uh, chat uh, between you. Uh, and if anybody would like to be in contact after the meeting, don't hesitate to, to drop a mail to me or to Antonio Castello. And we will be really enjoy, we will really enjoy to introduce uh, each other and uh, and that is our role, uh, try to establish these uh, opportunities of cooperation uh, among this uh, ecosystem. Antonio, please. Yes, I have a, a curiosity regarding the, well, we see a lot of advertisement of at-home devices uh, for hair removal, but on the other hand, you presented systems with a combination of techniques that um, they seem to be not really good for at-home use. So what's the feeling of Sinclair regarding these at-home solutions? Uh, do you think they uh, are going to be pressing in the future? Um, or do you still think that um, professional um, people need to be in charge of these devices? Uh, okay, for home solutions, you can have, a, for some applications, you can have a home solutions. Okay, for, for Heremol, for example, there are home solutions. 
Uh, and for a state that has home solution, the problem is always the result. It's always the result. With, with for, for home solution, you will have some results. And, and when people require uh, better results, they need to be, uh, they need to go to a clinic, to speak with a doctor, to speak with a specialist, and to find the treatment, the, uh, the, the good treatment for this person. Okay? To have a uh, long-term uh, treatment because hair removal at the end or uh, for skin tightening for fat reduction you want to have a, a permanent result no for for, for many times no and sometimes uh, you prefer to pay a little more but to have a, a, a best result okay we are not now thinking to to uh, to go on on home uh, home home solutions because at the end our patients uh, the, the, the wish of the patient is to have really good results. For, for fillers, for example, you need a, a doctor to, to put the, fill, the filler, the injectables. Okay? For this case, uh, home, home made solutions are, is, not a, is not a good uh, a solution. Thank you. I see here a common point with L'Oreal because uh, I see also that some studies need to be performed before to find the right solution for each uh, uh, person, let's say. So, um, it's, it's, it's good that we have this common point also between the different treatments or different products. Yes, sure. And I think that uh, uh, really skin is, is not easy. It's, I think probably one of the most complex system of uh, the human body because it's made of uh, different layer, different uh, components. So it's a very complex uh, system. It's not easy to, to touch or to interact with the, mm. let's say, it's easy to interact, but it's also easy to make some mistakes. So exactly. I feel I full support this uh, uh, safe approach to the problem. Normally, these home devices are safe because they are should be safe, no, to be uh, home devices. But the efficacy is not the efficacy and the speed of the treatment is not uh, as good as you can find in a in a clinic or in a doctor. Sure, sure. And let's see, before to go to the next speaker, uh, okay, uh, uh, starting from the comments from uh, Philip from Weinert Fiber Optics, uh, we touched the topic of fiber optics. Uh, I will uh, just uh, give uh, some words about two uh, important uh, European initiatives. One is MedFab, is a pilot line that is uh, devoting and supporting development of uh, medical devices and also supporting a very important phase that is uh, the clinical trials and all the regulatory parts. And uh, a symmetric project is Fabulous, which is dealing with micro-optics. So speaking about laser, we've spoken about uh, beam shape and beam shaping. So uh, it could be really another interesting pilot line that could support uh, in developing a special shape or a special beam shaping uh, and, or, and or combining uh, diodes beam. Mm -hmm. So please uh, take in account that these are two uh, European pilot lines as a periodic open course where companies could get a very fruitful support. And, uh, and I think that Antonio Castello is uh, the, special, the contact point for MedFab. And uh, our colleague, uh, Jeremy Pico Clement, is the contact point for uh, Fabulous Pilot Line. Just regarding method, uh, just a few a few words because they, we have an open call plan for next November 22. So any company interested in going from photonics to medical devices, and if you feel that you need support, as Antonio mentioned, both in design, manufacturing, but also in going with the regulations and uh, certifications, um, you can contact us and uh, get some uh, nice funding um, and, and help in developing your, your product. So feel free to contact us for, for support. Yes. And okay, this probably is the right moment also to introduce the next speaker, Hesji. Uh, she's a, a medical advisor. She's working in the regulatory side and she will uh, tell us about uh, what is making, what is uh, developing Bioptron. 
Hey. Hi, everyone. Yes, great. Uh, can you hear my voice and see my screen? Perfect. These are clear. Ah, perfect. Okay, I will turn on my pointer. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me for this meeting. I'm Dr. Ezgi Kalai, medical advisor of Pyoptron. Uh, Bioptron is a medical device company which has been on the market for more than 30 years and oops, sorry, um, and sold more than 3 million units of devices. Uh, it's a class 2A medical device. Today I will try to summarize the mechanism of action of our devices and how it is used in aesthetics and cosmetics area. A Bioptron device provides a polarized light, which has therapeutic effects, and all devices have a light source at the beginning, and it is covered by a UV blocker. Then the light goes through a polarizing filter. Uh, before the filter, when the light is more diffuse and it can go in every angle, but the filter lets only the vertical part of the light. So after this polarization step, uh, it helps the light to have more optimal penetration to the tissues. And the Polarized light covers all the visible colors and a part of the infrared, here you can see, uh, but it does not include the UV, therefore it is considered as safe in terms of UV related adverse events. Uh, here you can also see the transmission spectrum and the cut of the UV here at the three, 350 nanometers. Uh, compared to the LED devices, which are also quite popular, of course, in the cosmetics area, LED devices provide a monochromatic light, usually around blue and around red, uh, but Bioptron light provides a huge broad of uh, wavelength, therefore it, it has more potential therapeutic effect. And Bioptron light is not coherent as the laser therapies, it is incoherent, it is out of sync, uh, therefore it doesn't have the risk of damaging the tissue. This is probably why it is also can be sold as home-based devices and it uh, no risk of damaging the tissue <laughs> to summarize. And it has a low energy. It is consistent and it has the intensity of 2.4 uh, joules per minute. And that is why it is safe and it, ha it has the possibility of precise dosing in each treatment. Uh, in terms of mechanism of action, what does the light actually do to the living tissue and cause changes in the cellular level? Uh, this is quite unknown, the, the full mechanism is still uncertain, but we can say that there are multiple valid hypotheses, such as uh, polarized light th therapy can change the organization of the cell membrane, and therefore it can uh, regulate the multiple interaction of the cells, or it can... Uh, regulate the mito mitochondria and it can uh, stimulate the mitochondria. Therefore, it can augment the cell energy and it can increase the nucleic acid production. Uh, there are a couple of in vitro studies about that, but in the end of the day, we know that there are more visible changes, such as increasing the blood circulation or changing the production of certain proteins and cytokines, therefore being able to regulate the inflammation. Uh, the keywords for the mechanism of action of Bioptron is the inflammation. Uh, before going to the aesthetics and cosmetics, I first want to talk about a little about the wound healing, because wound healing is one of the main indications that Bioptron is used widely. And also it is about cosmetics and aesthetics, of course. Uh, polarized light can decrease the cytokines and cells that are responsible from the inflammation. When the inflammation is decreased, the symptoms related to it, such as pain or edema or redness, can also decrease. Uh, meanwhile, studies also show that polarized lights increase the uh, proliferation of the cells or proteins or cytokines or growth factors that are related to the connective tissue and the skins, such as fibroblasts and epithelial cells. Uh, when epithelialization and the new formation of the vessels are increased, the wound healing is also improved. Uh, there are multiple clinical studies of bioptron polarized light, but I cannot show everything, of course, because of the limited time. Here you can see an example of pictures. Uh, we see a deep thermal burn here, healing slowly, month by month. And uh, this study, in, the, in this study, authors commented that the bioptron reduced the need for surgery here, and it accelerated the wound healing. It also reduced the scars and contraction. Contraction is a huge problem with the burns. And here you can see the pinch test of the skin. Uh, it also reduced the hospital stay and better functional and aesthetic results were provided by Bioptron. 
And biopton light, it's, it's not just for burn, it can also uh, treat lots of different types of wounds, such as operational, operational incisions or traumas or ulcers. And when it comes to the cosmetics, we all know that skin um, changes by time, especially they lose their support system, such as the collagen uh, organization or the, the, the fat tissue and the wrinkles start to form because of it and the vessels are getting reduced. And by time, skin looks a bit different than the younger skin. And Biopron has anti-aging property, uh, anti-aging properties because of the polarized light. Uh, polarized light can stimulate the fibroblasts and increase the angiogenesis, which is the new vessel formation. And also it can increase the collagen production. Um, also, it is used widely in combination with other dermatological procedures. Here in this study, you can see an eyelid operation and a facelift operation. While one, one side of the face is treated with bioptron here and here, the other side is treated naturally. And both sides are treated naturally, but one side is used with bioptron. Uh, therefore, the patients were somehow functioned as a self-control. And uh, after five to seven days of the treatment, you can see the difference between the edema, the, between the sides edema and the hematoma. And here also with the facelift, you can see the, this side is quite clear and this side is still very much bruised. And the differences are quite obvious. And here you can see a couple of testimonial examples. Uh, Biopteron is used after mesotherapy here and after PRP here. Usually these minimally, uh, minimally invasive treatments can cause temporary inflammation of the skin. They can cause redness or small bruises or pain. Uh, but with biopteron, those adverse events are at minimum and it can be combined with different type of dermatological procedures such as fillers or Botox, derma rollers, different type of lasers and cellulite treatments. Of course, this part is cosmetic, so it's hard to show clinical data here but we have lots of testimonials from the doctors. Uh, we have, uh, this is this part I already explained, but the inflammation is reduced, swelling and the infection risk is reduced, bruising and hematoma are reduced and the scar formation is also reduced. Uh, we have three different models. Medol is the home use. B Pro one is a little bigger than the Medol and it can be used in clinics and also at homes. And B2 is designed for the professional use. It, it has a floor stand, it is a quite big uh, product. Uh, aesthetics and anti-aging is not the only area we cover. As I said, it is a medical device. So it is medically certified in the treatment of wound healing, a couple of pediatric diseases, pain, dermatological disorders, and seasonal affective disorder. Uh, because most of the uh, indications are related to its anti-inflammatory properties. We have a huge amount of bibliography. I only share the, share the studies that are related to wound healing and cosmetics. But if you want to learn more, you can always reach me. Here I also provided my email. Thank you for your time and attention. And I can always have your questions here. Thank you so much. Uh, that is really... Again, uh, something that really opening a new uh, point of interest for us, I would say, not point of care, but really a lot of interest. I see that uh, Constantinas already raised the hands, then Gregorio, and there is also a question in the chat from René. So let's start with Constantinas, and then we proceed with the round. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, thank you uh, for a very nice presentation. It seems uh, like a cure for all for from everything. <laughs> so uh, I'm wondering the, what part of this uh, broadband light source you know makes the cure, curing. Is this uh, infrared light or or combination of all? What what you know process be behind it? I mean, it is not possible to say it. A certain wavelength is more curable than the others because we don't have many, many studies like wavelength by wavelength. So most of the studies are coming from the red and infrared part, which is quite uh, therapeutic, but covering the whole thing might add some therapeutic effects, we say. But we don't have, a, as I said, separate wavelength study. Yeah, because it seems that, you know, 
This uh, curing can be done, you know, at the sunlight. Just to have a UV filter. <laughs> okay, yeah. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Okay, Gregorio, what is your mind? Uh, you are mute. Okay. Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. How many? How many? The first question is how many sessions. Uh, is a uh, standard or normal for this um, for a treatment for a treatment for example to for an aesthetic treatment is my mm -hmm. first question the second question is is the the patient uh, feeling any pain uh, during the treatment mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so the first question is up to the indication, of course. For example, if the problem is chronic and inflammational pain, such as joint pain, it can help every time you can use it through your whole life but if the problem is just a small wound or if it's a surgical operation that you want to heal from it uh, it can takes take up to 10 days usually the hematomas and bruises are healing around one week for example and with biopteron it's a bit faster than that it's three to four days you can see the difference as i said it is up to the indication but we pro, uh, we suggest to use for 10 minutes and twice a day, if possible, if not once a day. Uh, and for this, ah, sorry. No, I assume this is a, a, a treatment for, for the home or for a clinic? This. It is both. Both. Yeah, we have three devices. You can use it at home, the small ones, and the big one is for professional use for clinics. I see. And for the pain part, <laughs> For the pain part, it is low energy. That is why it doesn't have any damaging properties. So it's there is a warm sensation coming from the infrared red part, but other than that, no difference from the pain. Thank you. Which are the main difference from uh, the home uh, device and the, let's say the clinic device? Is more powerful or just uh, more big, bigger the, the area? Mm -hmm. In terms of power, the source is different because the I can share it again, maybe. Yes, to show please. the devices. <clears throat> because the home device looks like a mm -hmm. handheld device, and mm -hmm. the other looks uh, something that is uh, on the table. Yeah. So here is the home device, which is called yes. Medol. It is, uh, I think it's it, it is six hundred grams or something. It's quite small, and it has a five centimeter of diameter. It is for basic home related uh, accidents or small pains or joints or wounds, that type of things. And the B Pro one is a bit larger than that. It has 11 diameter of uh, lights, the filter. And B, uh, B, B2 is quite big. It is three kilos and it has a floor stand comes with it. So it is mostly, actually, it, it is only sell to clinics. Uh, in terms of source and the uh, power of the light, it is different. This is a bit, of course, it is lower and the big one has the bigger source, but because of the diameter is also different. Uh, in terms of mean energy, they consider as the same. They all provide a 2.4 joule per centimeter square per minute. So the indications are all the same. It's just the diameter that is different. If you have a huge burn, you can use a bigger one. In clinics, for example, the big one is considered as a burn device. They combine it with the usual burn treatments. And when they are doing the uh, basic treatment for the burns, they use the, the, the light for 10 minutes extra and then close the wound. Okay, okay. But from technical point of view, they considered as similar. Okay, uh, I uh, <clears throat> I have here in the chat uh, a question from Rene from Lumiere. Rene, yes, please. yes. Actually, you just answered my my question. My question was related to the power density that that, that was used. So, two point four uh, joule per, per centimeter per minute. Mm -hmm. So you keep a constant the fluence. So every device is as this fluence maximum. Yes. yes. Because this Thank is. You. They say the safe uh, fluence for the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And I see uh, Persephone from Power Photonics, please. A, a question related to that. Um, could you comment on the 
profile of the source spatially? Is it like a flat top distribution that you have? How close to a flat top is it? Could you please repeat it? I couldn't catch the question. <laughs> this always happens. I, I don't know what it is about my microphone. Um, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay, it's related to that. Um, I'd like to know more about the distribution of the light source. Is it like a flat top across your, your device at the output? That I really don't know because I'm not a technical, I, I don't have the technical background. So okay. I don't know what do you mean in terms of distribution. I know that the light is more condensed in the center area and it gets okay. a bit lower in the peripheral area. But when you calculate the mean, it is 2.4. But other than that, as I said, I'm a medical doctor. So, But if you can send me an email, I can, of course, uh, yeah. forward it to our technical department and provide you an answer. Oh, thank you. That That is helpful. Um, I, I wondered if it might be useful to you to have more of a, a flat thing. So you're saying that it's more intense in the middle. I guess that would be useful if you are targeting like a, an intricate shape that you had to treat. But if you wanted to do the same intensity over a larger area, maybe just a uniform distribution would be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. I'll send you an email later. Right okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great, great that uh, are starting these uh, exchanges of uh, information and cooperation. <clears throat> uh, maybe before to go to the next speaker, I have an, a question from my side. So. Uh, you are a medical doctor and you are in the mm -hmm. regulatory department. Uh, how complex uh, is uh, uh, the regulatory uh, path uh, from your point of view? So which is really, because I think that most of the technical guys here uh, are fearing about mm -hmm. this name. But uh, if you can just comment and give, me, give also some positive view of this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually feel the same way with the technical people here because I work in the medical department, but we are working together with the regulatory really closely. And I'm really new at the medical devices, but still even trying to regulate the changes between MDD to MDR, it was quite challenging for us, especially since because we are a third year old technology. Our med uh, clinical studies are not that new. Some of them are quite old because at that time we need to needed to provide the efficacy, right? So at those clinical studies sometimes do not have the necessary information to MDR because MDR is quite new. Right now we are trying to regulate that process and from a regulatory point of view, it's really, really hard. But yeah, we are trying to get some uh, external opinions on that. And we are trying to provide some new data, especially for the post-marketing part, because it is marketed for 30 years. So we have a lot of data from post-marketing. And the advantages part of Bioptron, since it doesn't have any adverse event related to UV or like laser related to skin damage, it is quite easy to regulate that part. But as I said, it is... It is a challenge for us right now too. Okay, I think that this is a challenge for all the Everyone, medical yeah. <laughs> manufacturer in this one. So MDR is a is a great concept, but the application in real world is a little. It takes longer than expected. Let's say so. Probably is a, somehow it been underestimated uh, the impact on. Uh, real uh, company, real situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't see any other question. Uh, and so really, uh, I think that's really, really great because really uh, we are looking how wide is uh, the, the impact of photonics is also on this, on this field. And uh, I will proceed with the next speaker, uh, Lorenzo Marchesi from Quanta System. So, uh, Lorenzo, the floor is yours, please. Uh, tell us uh, what is going on uh, from Quanta system side. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Um, hello, everyone. I just, uh, just try to share my screen. Okay. Just a second. Can you see it? Yes, uh, perfect. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. I'm Lorenzo Marchesi, product manager at, uh, at Quanta system for the dermatology and the uh, stick division. So, okay, 
so first of all, allow me to quickly introduce you to, to Quanta System and what we do. Uh, Quanta is uh, an Italian company founded in uh, 1985, uh, born to design industrial laser and uh, for art restoration. In the late 90s, Quanta stepped in the medical field, focusing uh, mainly in dermatology and aesthetic and also in surgical fields, uh, mainly for uh, urology. Since the beginning, Quanta um, showed a constant growth and it's now employing more than 280 people and support over 100 distributors all over the world. Quanta internal R&D department is constantly designing new and uh, innovative uh, technological solutions to keep the pace with the latest uh, news, uh, both in the medical and uh, uh, the laser field. I can say that uh, this is the, um, the soul of Quanta system and it's surely one of the reasons why Quanta uh, is one of the top 10 uh, medical laser company uh, in the world. Quanta internal, um, we develop different uh, kind of uh, laser technology um, to face the largest variety of uh, dermatological and aesthetic uh, indications and provide the, the most suitable solution. Um, Sorry, I just skipped the one. Okay, um, so here you can see uh, you can uh, you can have a glimpse of our dermatological uh, portfolio. Uh, we can start uh, from the from the left to the right uh, um, with the Discovery Pico, uh, mainly for tattoo removal and uh, pigment addition, and going through um, long pulse laser, also to ablative uh, lasers like the ULASER NT in uh, in the center, and also on diode laser like the 585 uh, and um, on the right uh, that is effective mainly on uh, on vascular lesions. So let's now talk about what lasers do for, uh, for dermatology. Uh, there is a very large variety of skin condition that uh, all the different kind of laser can treat. Uh, so I had to choose one and I choose uh, to, to speak about the, the acne scars. So acne scars can appear with, uh, with different aspects, as you can see in my, in my slide. Uh, it can be like a depressed scar for uh, ice peak scar or box scar scar and the rolling scar that is mainly um, a, a lesion related to the to the collagen of the um, uh, present in the skin but also it can be uh, raised scars like hypertrophy scar where there is a strong uh, vascular component or uh, um, can present color changes like hyperpigmentation or um, or down, dark brown uh, spots um, all these different conditions can be treated specifically with uh, one, uh, one technology uh, better than the other. For example, we can start with the Discovery Pico. Um, using a picosecond pulse combined with the 8 millimeter fractional spot, um, we can have a real effective uh, treat, treat, retreatment um, on the breasted scars, uh, taking advantage of the generation of uh, plasma in, um, and the LIOBs under the surface to stimulate the regeneration of the collagen. Then we can have uh, uh, the 585, for example, uh, for the more uh, vascularized um, scars. And uh, in this case, the 585 uh, nanometer is uh, more absorb highly absorbed by hemoglobin and uh, its interaction can uh, help in the coagulation of the um, vascular, vascular component of the, of the lesion. Last but not least, uh, we have uh, a deeper and um, uh, if we have a more deeper and more severe skin condition um, provoked by acne scar, uh, we can use the, one of the pride of quanta system, that is the mixed technology. That is a proprietary techno um, technology that uh, uh, is used to blend, in this case, a, coag a coagulative laser at 15-14 nanometers and a CO2 laser to target both the collagen under the surface and the, the most superficial layer of the skin. So we have just given a quick look to some of the technology um, developed by Quanta system uh, to effectively treat one of the several skin condition that can be managed by fertilizers. Specific acne scars can be, must be uh, investigated and uh, treated using the most uh, suitable technology. Uh, moreover, laser treatment can be combined with uh, cosmetics to further improve the overall uh, skin um, health and, and texture. What about the future? Uh, Quanta is continuously working to design and develop new technology uh, in order to keep the pace with the new findings uh, in the clinical and laser field. Um, but not only that, we are working um, to be compliant um, the most with the new regulation, like the new common specification of the MER, um, where there will be the need to integrate uh, real-time sensors uh, to this detect all the skid characteristics, like uh, uh, the presence of melanin and, um, and the, the distance uh, during the treatment and all of this uh, stuff. So it was just a, a quick overview. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. I think that uh, 
especially the last uh, slide is a quite dense slide because, okay, I try just to, I have just a really a shot. So I was looking on the previous slide, but the last one really, you are talking about uh, integration uh, between laser and cosmetics. And also uh, you raise the needs of also have uh, sensing and probably uh, if I'm not wrong, not before or after the treatment, but even during the treatment. So, yes, uh, mainly I, um, for, for what concerns the cosmetic, uh, the, the, the first question, so the cosmetic part, uh, I can say that uh, we are not uh, uh, combining uh, the two treatments. I, I was just saying that there are, uh, um, uh, it is not the only solution, but it must be, uh, it could be uh, the laser, uh, could be, um, I can say, um, paralleled by uh, cosmetic uh, treatment. The, the most important uh, um, for me question that you, that you are making is uh, related to the, to the MDR and the sensors that we must integrate uh, inside the device during the treatment. I think that this is a, a, a problem that uh, also uh, I can say Bioptron or Sinclair uh, are uh, going to face because um, especially for home use devices, uh, there will be the need to integrate this kind of, uh, uh, seems like that will be the need to integrate this kind of um, of sensors like, uh, uh, for example, the, the melanin uh, um, amount detection, um, because uh, the um, you know the, there are six kind of uh, of skin uh, of skin type the um, established by the Fitzpatrick uh, scale, and um, every kind every type of uh, of skin needs um, or better interact with one or, or other uh, wavelength. So, for example, I, I take the example of a removal. Um, if you have dark and skin type, you will use. Uh, um, for example, Alexandrite, or otherwise you will use the uh, and the YAG, for example, in the laser in the laser field. Uh, so um, as long as uh, the amount of melanin um, uh, de determines the, um, the amount of interaction, uh, the, the effective interaction with one or uh, the other wavelength, uh, you will we will need to to measure the the amount this amount of melanin, and it will it, it must be uh, in real time during the treatment. It seems. This is one of the examples, but we are, oh, I think, uh, to speak of everyone, that we are still waiting for this common specification. So we'll see what uh, what will be. Yes, yes, I think that uh, maybe is also it could be really. I really invite uh, uh, Lorenzo to to to, take, to be in contact with uh, Panagiotis from L'Oreal because I think that uh, exactly you are observing the skin from a different point of view, but probably and also uh, Bioptron, Okay. I don't say Sinclair because I think that you are a little competing, but okay. But the point is somehow you are observing the skin from different point of view because you have a, a slightly different target, but uh, probably is really a synergic. Uh, and why not? Uh, if we go into the detail, uh, I guess that also then is necessary to deal with the technical things like uh, fibers, how to uh, look through the fiber, or through the optics, so really is a, is a complex, but this could be really the future trend. And also, yeah, uh, facing uh, MDR, that's, uh, that's uh, probably- Exactly, the important. title could be facing the MDR in the, in the near future. Again, so <laughs> probably a joint effort could be really a solution for the future. I see, uh, but okay, then I, I, okay, I stop talking because I talk too much. Uh, Rene from Lumir uh, raised the hands and also Beate from uh, Berlin. Please, uh, René. Yes, my, my question is related to your uh, tattoo removal system using picosecond lasers. Uh, I was wondering, uh, because picosecond laser usually rely on two photon absorption in, in order to, to get proper absorption in, in the skin. So why do you use uh, such a not a cheap technology, I would say, ultra-fast laser, uh, instead of a... Uh, mid infrared uh, laser that that could be absorbed uh, quite efficiently without the the cost of uh, have to deal with uh, pulse uh, ultra short pulses. 
Uh, thank you for, for your question. Uh, well, actually, the, um, uh, our Pico devices, uh, um, we used, we um, suggest to use the, this kind of technology for the, to the removal because of its uh, um, photoacoustic effect. So uh, the idea is to, uh, to use ultra, ultra short pulse laser in order to um, confine all, uh, a, great, a very great amount of power um, to deliver this very great amount of power uh, in a very short pass inside the, um, the drop of ink inside the, the under the skin in order to break it instead of uh, um, I can say instead of delivering all the thermal energy uh, in the tissue around so to remove to avoid uh, problems related to scars or uh, um, coagulation of the um, surrounding tissue we um, we target directly the, the pigment uh, under the, the surface. And to do this, uh, we, we just need to short as much as possible the, the duration of the pulse and to, to obtain this photoacoustic effect and to break the particles. Okay, so yeah, high peak power is, is required. Yes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, yeah, please, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, both the things. So, um, yeah, the, the high peak power is, uh, is required, but because you have to be very short with the timings. So in order to, to reach the correct amount, to give the current amount of energy, you, you just need to have uh, this short power, this short uh, pulse, but with really high power. That is why yeah. our device. Okay. Uh, maybe now uh, we give the space also to Beate from Lumix, Berlin. Yeah, my the first question I had was already asked by Rene, so <laughs> so I have the answer right away. I still have a question related to these those real time sensors because I think that is one of the really biggest challenges that laser based devices have to face still nowadays. So my question is: Are you more looking into some kind of optical sensors, because there are all, already a lot of optical sensors around, but the optical sensors always have that limitation. If you see the damage, then the damage already has happened. So the question is, how would you, or what kind of sensors could be made to, to detect the damage before the damage happens? Because optics just tells you what, what's already there. Exactly. Uh, so thank you for the question. I, to be honest, I don't have an answer to, the, to this question. Um, by the way, we are working, uh, uh, our internal R&D department is, uh, is currently working on this, deciding how to uh, phase this, uh, this request from the MDR. Uh, we are um, evaluating some different strategies. One of these, uh, for example, is the, is the optical um, path that you uh, just uh, you mentioned. Um, we are just going to understand if we need to do the, this uh, measurement during, uh, um, I can say real time during all the treatment or just before or uh, suddenly later after the, um, after the treatment. Um, but uh, we are still waiting for, uh, for this uh, um, exact specification. Um, for the moment, uh, one of the paths we are, we are following is this one of the, of the optical uh, uh, measurement of uh, the amount of melanin. And uh, we'll see. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't say more than this because uh, we are still waiting for some more uh, specification as everybody I think here. <laughs> Mm. And then I have another question related to the U laser. You said this is a mixed uh, mixed wavelength device, so you operate a fifteen forty nanometer wavelengths mm -hmm. uh, together with ten six hundred, which is a CO two, I imagine. Yes, exactly. So for fifteen forty, is this a diet or what? What kind of uh, yes, it's a diode and it's a coagulative wavelength, so we, we can have the, um, the effect to coagulate the collagen under the surface, and then we perform uh, um, uh, an ablative uh, interaction with the, with the CO2 laser. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. And Okay, uh, I see Antonio, my colleague, that uh, has also some questions, and then uh, Constantinas from Optoman. Uh, thank you. My, my question is also related with this combination of, of wavelengths. Um, do you use uh, both of them in a sequential order? 
um, do use at the same time. Both of them depends on the treatment. I don't know if you can explain a little bit how is the the process of of this laser. Okay, uh, both sources, uh, both the sources are inside the, the device. Um, our technology allows us to uh, mix them uh, in both the way you suggested, so uh, sequentially and simultaneously. But it's really, really, really dependent on the application. There are some application that uh, uh, needs a simultaneous emission, other some that needs uh, a sequential emission. Um, it, it really depends on the on the application. But yes, they they can be blended in uh, in all these uh, combination. Ok, thank you. Lisa Costantinas. Ok, thank you for the presentation. Uh, in your presentation for acne treatment, uh, you showed uh, different wavelengths uh, to, to treat different uh, <coughs> conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, are these uh, all different wavelengths, laser sources are integrated in one system? And also um, before mentioned... Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, no please. Yeah. Uh, so you also mentioned that there's like uh, six types of skin of uh, me uh, melanin. So also do you have a solution where you combine these different wavelengths for all these type of skins in one system? Okay, so um, to answer the first question, uh, no, they are uh, different devices. I choose this uh, this kind of application because uh, um, it's uh, uh, so uh, its variety allow me to introduce you um, so different uh, uh, kind of our uh, lasers. Uh, actually, no, they are three different de devices. One is Discovery Pico, one is the 585 that is a, a compact uh, uh, device, and the latest one is uh, the, the last one is the um, the U Laser uh, MT. Um, they treat the different condition, uh, okay, they can be a bit overlapped uh, in some cases, but it's uh, again really dependent on the on the final application. Um, not uh, in the case of acne scar, it's not that uh, dependent on uh, the melanin amount, uh, so it's not really dependent on the um, um, on the Fitzpatrick uh, skin type, so the, the scale one to six that you mentioned. Um, but there are so many, some other applications that uh, are really dependent on this. I can say, for example, the, the, the removal, uh, it's strictly dependent on the, on the Fitzpatrick uh, skin type. Um, depending on the Fitzpatrick skin type, you can choose uh, um, one treatment, one wavelength or another. And some of our uh, devices contains both this, uh, this wavelength in order to be flexible to, to treat every kind of skin uh, type, for example. Yeah, probably the a very challenging uh, situation is that uh, when you are dealing with the part of the human body, every person is a different case. So you can have uh, some common specification, but then uh, it's very important to have uh, the doctor looking on the reaction of the body of the skin. Exactly. Because uh, from one person to the another, maybe the color is nearly the same, but then under the skin, there is more difference. So this is also the challenge for the, for the doctor or the medical doctor that is doing uh, this application. And I will say, when we are on the uh, low side, low power side, the difference are much uh, smoother. When you go to higher energy or energy, uh, higher power is also becoming more evident, A small difference could be have big impact on the skin. So this is really probably the differentiation between uh, point of care or home uh, devices and uh, medical devices that uh, I imagine like uh, Sinclair or Quanta system, these type of laser are really recommended or by law or uh, force to be used by uh, medical doctor. It's, it's yeah, only physician and uh, only physicians and doctors, yes. Because they must be aware about what is going on. Uh, so in this moment, the best sensor is uh, are the eyes of the doctor. <laughs> So we can challenge. we can say that <laughs> we must go, and I think that uh, for a long time it's very difficult uh, to substitute uh, the competence of uh, physicians with uh, artificial intelligence or what else. Maybe we can give them some uh, better support to understand better, but really, that is the added value of the human, uh, the human added value here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I don't see no other question. Uh, 
any other anybody else would like to comment? Uh, I will say that this is really is a little strange uh, meeting. It's not too technical, but we touched a lot of very interesting uh, topics. So maybe uh, I will really invite. Uh, I re first of all, I will really thank all the speakers and all the participants, and maybe. Uh, we can have a, we have also time maybe for uh, some uh, final words for the from the speakers. So uh, I will, for example, ask uh, Panagiotis, uh, what is our his feeling after also looking on uh, other solutions, other application as well. To uh, I see Lorenzo, uh, SG, and uh, sorry Gregorio. I don't see, but okay, Gregorio. So. Maybe we can just close this meeting with the, the final uh, loop of uh, from each of you four, and also maybe also Optoman, our sponsor, uh, and as well uh, Focus Light. What is your what you perceive and what is uh, going on with this topic? Uh, thank you very much uh, once again. Uh, it was a, a very very nice uh, uh, discussion, and I must say that. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested to see how um, uh, we converge more and more um, uh, in terms of uh, needs and uh, that, uh, let's say as well, the, the frontier between uh, uh, cosmetics, uh, aesthetics and uh, medicine uh, becomes, uh, uh, let's, let, let's say, uh, thinner and thinner. So what we, um, we see and we discuss today, for example, between the uh, medical devices uh, or uh, um, there are common application with some uh, cosmetic uh, devices or cosmetic products, for example, because I think that um, there is a lot of common interest in terms of uh, how we uh, um, we use uh, energy and special uh, energy from light in order to treat um, uh, different uh, uh, aspects of, of skin, for example, or hair. And um, I think that uh, there will be uh, many nice interactions uh, that will uh, emerge uh, uh, from these uh, collaborations. Uh, and I think that uh, we can we can all agree that uh, photonics has a lot to uh, to bring on the table uh, in terms of uh, technology, so that uh, the whole industry can uh, can move on further. Good. Thank you so much for the fine words about photonics. Gregorio, what is your comment or what you bring home from to this afternoon? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, it has been very interesting talks uh, for, for different companies, uh, from Quanta System, from, uh, from uh, I don't see the name, uh, from... Uh, Lumiere, I think. Lumiere, exactly, uh, very interesting to, to share. I think uh, this kind of uh, events are very important because this allows us to contact. No, uh, now I, we are going to contact uh, also with uh, different people from from Fiber Solutions. I think we are. I think I, I have here uh, a similar uh, similar topics. Okay, to have synergies between photonics and and, and drugs. No, and, and to improve the results. No, because the results is not only using one technique. Is also combining one technique with other uh, with other uh, uh, product, and, and I see the trend is is very uh, common for from different companies, no? And this is the future, no? To to find synergies between uh, some technology, for example, photonics and other technologies, and and this is very good because this open collaboration between different sectors, and at the end we will improve the the. Uh, this industry no? of, uh, of, of cosmetics. And this is very, very interesting. Good, very good. Uh, SG, this is the first time uh, we really pulled you in, uh, in this meeting. Are, yeah, you this is, Are you coming this back This is again? actually my first talk about Biopron at all. So <laughs> I was really excited and stressed a little bit because of the attendees were mostly tech person and I will be a bit more inadequate. But yeah, after the talk, I learned a lot. Thank you for the opportunity. It was really nice to learn from different companies and different experiences. And I was a bit more traditional in terms of medical and cosmetic and I, I believe that that should be clear separate separate clearly separate 
but I see that, especially after preparing for this talk, I see that the cosmetics and aesthetics are quite gray area and we should learn from each other, apparently. And it was really nice to know that we face the similar challenges, even though we have separate technologies and separate companies. It is nice to know that we are going through the same things. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you for the nice words. Lorenzo, what do you bring home? Yes, I think uh, to, uh, as the last one, uh, I can say that uh, they stole the words from uh, from me. <laughs> uh, I agree totally with um, Gregorio and Etsy for the um, for the sharing of the experience. So it's I'm, I, I really appreciate this uh, this kind of event, and also I agree. I will uh, surely get in touch with uh, Panagiotis uh, for the uh, for the sensor they are uh, developing in some way. So thank you very much for uh, thank you everyone. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Constantinas, would you like to have something at the end? Oh, well, you know, uh, interesting talks, uh, interesting to see uh, photonic solutions, how we uh, interact in the uh, very <laughs> nice, nice field aesthetics. Right? And uh, yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, I definitely uh, like quantum the system presentation because uh, we are talking about high power of course uh, you know uh, human skin and high power lasers uh, seems uh, quite dangerous but we are professionals <laughs> so it was very interesting yeah uh, i think uh, i will keep in touch with people around okay very good very good antonio what do you think it's time uh, to close this meeting what uh, is your opinion and uh... yeah it was it was uh, great as everybody mentioned to see how photonics is used in so different applications and in also different different ways and um i i also keep in mind the sinclair presentation with combination of other techniques um also the solution from from the optron uh, the a uh, lot of different uh, approaches uh, by quanta systems um and definitely how Royal is using photon is to characterize and to develop new new solutions so uh, we are touching really different applications in the same field so it was quite interesting um so yeah thank you again to all the speakers um and uh, yeah we think we can we can close the event for today uh, thank you also to the people attending and uh, it was a pleasure to be here okay very good so today we put uh, we brought some light in this uh, gray area and I think that uh, I'm really proud that we did it. Thank you so much to everybody, to the speakers and the, to the attendees. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Bye. Good evening. Bye.